<laughs> Alright, let's jump straight into this. If you are an intermediate drummer, I am almost 100% sure that you've encountered this pattern before. It goes right, left, right, left, kick, kick. Sometimes it might be called four on the hands and two on the feet. It is a really common linear pattern in a six note grouping and probably the first one I learned actually. Today we'll be playing this pattern as sextuplets. I'll show you how that might sound used in a whole bar fill on the snare first. That will be three times of the pattern, right, left, right, left, right, left, kick, kick. And on the fourth count, I'm just going to play single strokes, alternating right and left, so that I don't end with three bass drum notes in a row, which would just be unnecessarily cruel. For good measure, I'll just improvise some orchestration of the pattern we just played around the kit so you have an idea of how it might sound. There is nothing bad about this fill at all, and if you're not quite familiar with it yet, I would suggest taking some time to get used to the sticking pattern. It's a great pattern for just working on your hand and foot speed and coordination, and developing your kick doubles as well. But if you're already at the stage where this pattern, as is, is starting to sound kind of repetitive, kind of repetitive, repetitive, then I have a quick fix for you. Let's displace this pattern forward in time by an eighth note, which would be three sextuplets. So now we're starting on the end of four of the bar that comes before where we started the fill just now. That means we'll be able to play our pattern four times in its entirety and still have three notes left over. So we're going to fill that space with right, left, right, and you'll end with a left hand crash. Here's how that fill would sound on the snare. The cool thing about this displacement is that the final left hand note in every group of 4 lands on a downbeat that's on 1, 2, 3, or 4 in the bar. So if you use some of those downbeats as, say, snare accents, you can actually do some pretty fancy orchestrations while still keeping time in a very clear way so you don't lose the rest of your band while you're off chopping in sextuplet land. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Basically, you're just taking a pattern, moving it forward in time a little bit, adding some notes in the end so that you still finish your fill in the same place that you want to end it, and then just experimenting with that to see how the shape of the sounds that you create change with this slightly different displaced pattern. If you ever feel like you're stuck in a rut playing the same fills all the time, I hope this little tip encourages you to take some of those fills that you're already familiar with and just modify them a little bit by shifting them either earlier or later in the bar and see how that changes the fills that you can come up with. I'm pretty sure your vocabulary of fills is larger than you think it is. Happy practicing and I'll see you next time.